Good evening, Backwoods Gourmet Nation. I'm not sure if you're quite a nation yet, just uh, maybe just town. Uh, but Backwoods Gourmet Town, we can take we can take that. Uh, wanted to start off tonight's live chat. Um, just thanking all you guys, the, the people that have watched channel, the people that have subscribed, people that are you know religiously uh, coming in every week and seeing what we're posting and going back and. I see you guys back there in comments, just binge watching a lot of our older content. We appreciate all you guys that do that. That also appreciate um, all of our members. We we have uh, been growing steadily in members, and if you want to learn more about that, just go to any one of our videos and uh, click on the join button. That's going to pop up right here uh, below the video. And, and speaking of members, I'm gonna give her a short a shout out right now, Darla A, one of our uh, one of our original members, just came in from Ohio. Right, let me give a couple shout outs here. We uh, we've had this guy in here since even the live stream even started. Uh, James Aldery, he says uh, <clears throat> we appreciate you showing up, and I will get your question here in a second as soon as uh, we get a few more people coming in and we start the actual discussion uh, about. Uh, tonight's topic, which I want to bring up right now, which is cast iron skillets. We have uh, did uh, some general uh, general live stream generally about all kind of cast iron. Tonight we're going to focus just on skillets, which is the probably the most popular um, a type of cast iron cookware. You know, we use a lot of these big camp ovens back here. We love using those. I've turned a couple of my buddies onto these things, and they're just having a ball with them. And once you once you learn how fun it is to cook with a with a with a camp oven, that and the 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 opportunities of what you can cook in there are endless. All right, all right. So let's jump back in here and give a couple more shout outs real quick before we get dive into. The topic for tonight, which is the cast iron skillets. We got the Backwoods Country Boy from Southeast Alabama. Appreciate you showing up there. Hey, we got um, Dave from Polk Sporting Clays. Was out there yesterday shooting in a three bird tournament. Um, I'll try to leave you a link to their their place. If you're in Central Florida area, you want a fun place to go shoot, you got to go there. So we got Steve Sproul coming in. Uh, Carter Harris. Appreciate you showing up. YB from California. Still early over there on the left coast. Johnny Lyons, appreciate you. Joey Fisher, uh, he says, hi from Sin City. I guess that's Las Vegas, right? Yes, yeah, Las Vegas. And uh, Doug Jackson from New Jersey. Uh, Cooper the Great's here. Mike Rogers uh, says he only cooks with cast iron. So I pretty much, uh, Mike, that's pretty much all I cook with, too. Every once in a while, I'm still... I still struggle with eggs and cast iron for some reason. If I want to do over easy or something, I got one egg pan in there. It's like a chef pan. One of these, you know, commercial grade, it's a commercial grade uh, egg pan that I will use sometimes for eggs, but most time I still do them in cast iron. All right. Let me have a couple more uh, shout outs before they go away. Victor Villa from, from uh, Los Angeles, Robert Dooley. Appreciate there from Kansas, man. We're getting everybody from every, almost every state, uh, Showing up, we got North Star Great Danes coming in, and uh, squirrel hunting season in Rich Lome in a couple of weeks. Yeah, the small game coming up in Rich Lome over there. We could go find a good place to find them. All right, we got Carter uh, Carter Harris is from Arkansas showing up. Appreciate you. I got Aunt Darwina, Aunt Darwina in Minnesota. We got Yanji Yang. Hello from Minnesota. Also, Mike Rogers. He, I can't see quite where he's from, but it looks like Maine. It's chopped off a little bit there. Uh, let me see if I can decrease the size of my screen here a bit and get all the live chat there because it's chopping it off. Mike Wilson's from uh, Inverness, Florida. The yeah, other, that's better. I got to see it all now. Uh, Joey Fisher. Ye oh, crap. Now it was so small. I can't even see it. All right, we gotta come back up a little bit. All right, still giving some shout outs here. Uh, Mike, uh, mm, 
All right, I lost it again here. Let's go to the bottom of the chat. All right, we got Jimmy Mai from West Virginia. Terry McLaughlin, Topeka, Kansas. Mike Wilson, he's in Inverness, Florida, right down the road there. Mrs. Backwoods just showed up in here. You know she is a moderator and a member also. And if you become a member of the Backwoods Gourmet channel, your name will show up with a little emoji beside your name that shows your ranking as member. And you can also, members don't forget, you have custom emojis that you can use in chat. All right. Then we got uh, John Daigle. He's showing up there also, another member. How about your barbecue? Dwayne from uh, Joyce from North Carolina. Appreciate you showing up. Southern Griddler Outdoors. And we got a lot of people. He's from Live Oak, part of my old, near my old stomping grounds, North Florida. And uh, there's some good old boys out there in Live Oak now. And some guys that really know how to do some good barbecue over there. All right. Uh, we got uh, Loderman saying, hey, uh, Barbara Carbone from New York. All right. Uh, unique, sexy. Hi, guys from New Mexico. Appreciate you showing up. All right. So uh, hopefully get enough shout outs there. The first thing I'm going to do is get back to um, one of the questions that was up here before we went uh went live was from uh james and uh he's apparently seen our video on smoothing cast iron by sanding it out so um he's asking what's the best grit to use and i i actually brought that one out because i've seen his comment this is the one we did you still see it has the uh backwards gourmet engraved into the bottom of it so and it's it's a beautifully smooth pan i've been using it for Ever since we did the video, I haven't used it in a little bit of while, but it the see if you can see the season held up really well. Uh, let's see if I can get the light on it just right there. Maybe be able to compare this one to some of the old uh, antique ones. We use some grinder wheels and stuff like that on this one, but you don't have to have that. If you just got a regular sander, I'd start off with 80 grit just to get the high sparks off of it and get it down to where you just barely see any little bit of black specks in the bottom. And then switch over to 120, but don't go no, don't go no smoother than 120. I mean, you could polish it up till it was like a mirror, but you need a little bit of texture in there, just like when you're painting something. You need a little bit of texture on there to give a little place for that season to hook and grab and get in that down in that cast iron. And that after a couple of times, it'll it'll just come just as smooth as this one. All right, so don't go uh, any. Don't go any uh, smoother than 120. But you start with 80, that'll get you there quicker, and then switch over to 120. And a little random orbital, just a regular sander like you'd use wood, works just fine. And you really don't need to do sides and all that like I did. Uh, really not necessary. You just won't get that bottom slick, and uh, it'll work great for you. Okay. Anyway, let's give a couple more shout-outs here. We got uh, Steve Brewer from Utah. Appreciate you coming in. David Clay from Kissimmee. Uh, it says he likes our recipes uh, right here in town. Uh, yeah, we live we live very very near Kissimmee. Uh, all right, let's get down to a couple of the comments and questions here, and uh, we'll let me back up the chat here just a minute. Right, make sure I didn't miss anybody, and if I miss you, because sometimes this thing starts rolling pretty fast and I can't catch it. If I miss something you're asking, a question, put it in again. Uh, the best way to make sure that I see it is hit the uh, at button and start talking, start typing backwards, and uh, it should load, uh, uh, pop up there for you. Just click on it. That'll tag me. And then please write your question in all caps, and that will make it stand out among all the other things that are going by over here on the right hand side that I'm trying to watch while talk and keep up a train of thought. All right. Uh, righty. Uh, yeah, let's get back to some account comments. Uh, all right. I guess got tagged by Darla. All right. Now I see it's starting to go fast. All right. So John Daigle says, hi, appreciate it. Um, let me see. I missed one back up here. Uh, Barbara Cabron, she's from New York, and she says she loves cast iron, so 
we all, I think you're among friends here on this chat. Um, Mike Montgomery had a question. Appreciate you showing up there, Mike. Do you have a problem with seasoning coming to your field skillets? And he's from Phoenix. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to pull out a field here in a minute. And, um, we'll, and we'll talk about that in a little while. All right. Uh, you, Mike uh, Rogers says a shallow pan I use could be called a crate pan, eggs only. Yep, uh, maybe. Uh, I got one of those we're going to pull out here in a second. Darla, hey, appreciate you, Darla. And Darla is a moderator, so keep your comments respectful, or Darla or Mrs. Backwoods will kick you out of this chat. And that's why they're moderators. And she's just telling you how to, how to do a question to me. So it's just how she... Did it there? See, it shows up in red on you. I guess it shows up on your side too. I'm not sure. Shows up in red. Well, that flags that I need. Uh, that is a question directed to me and not just people talking amongst themselves. Okay, Cooper the Great. Appreciate you showing up. When I cook a steak, pork chop, chicken, it leaves a black outline of meat in the pan. I scrub the pan and get rid of the black marking. How do I get rid of it? Don't. Don't get rid of it. Just keep building up on it. Eventually, your pan's going to be so black. Like that uh, polished lodge, it ain't gonna make no difference. Okay, I use I use hot water. Okay, when the pan is hot, almost smoking hot, and the lodge brush, right? Tiny bit of the water in there just till it shh, you know it does all that steamy crap and squish that brush around. It'll take anything that's on that surface off. It'll bowl off any grease or anything else so in there, mixed with the water instantly. And that brush will bring up any little little bits that are stuck to the bottom of the pan. And after that, you just wipe it again with some oil, some fresh oil, put it back on the stove, let it smoke. Once it starts smoking, turn the burner off, let it cool off on its own. That way, your season won't get sticky. All right. You won't have to worry about it getting all uh, sticky. Let me put that back over there. Okay. <clears throat> season, season, season always, Mike. Appreciate that. Uh, that is the... The trick to cast iron, uh, it loves to cook with oil and uh, don't scrub the thing, whatever you do. And don't put no soap on. I'll, I'll never use no soap. Every once in a great while, I will use some Corona Duche cast iron soap. And that's uh, mostly an orange oil based soap. It, I know it smells like orange oil. I'm not sure what all the ingredients on it are. Every once in a while, I get one really cruddy or maybe overcook something a little bit, which happens every once in a while. Um, and I have to use a little bit of soap to get whatever's in it out. All right. Um, <clears throat> Steve Brewer is asking, have you ever used a stargazer skillet? I have not. If I could convince them to send me one, we will definitely do a review over here on the back of the chat. All right. So let me get over here and get another skillet. So we're talking about cast iron skillets tonight and uh, you guys go ahead and uh, comment as much as you want over. Um, let me see if I can get to the bottom of the chat here. My buttons not co cooperate. There we go. All right. Before we get to this one, uh, Anthony Jujul, I can't pronounce the last name, last name, but he says, uh, have you ever used the Weber cast iron pan for the kettle? Uh, any thoughts? Uh, no, I have not. I haven't even, not even seen that product or even knew it was uh, available. Scott Jakin, appreciate you showing up. He's uh, from the Finger Lakes region of New York. He started binge watching yesterday. We appreciate it. Appreciate everybody that's uh, that's joining the chat tonight. So we're going to move it on a little bit. And the first skillet I'm going to talk about, you might see – you might see these in some of your antique stores, flea markets, steak sales, stuff like this. And um, and the first thing you'll notice about them is they're very smooth on the inside. Okay, this is uh this is a little number six right here, but on the back they're all stamped, made in Taiwan. Okay. Don't discount these little pans that are made in Taiwan. These came over in um, in uh, 60s and 70s. 
from Taiwan, maybe some of them a little earlier than that. And you'll find them in the, in the stores and they're perfectly smooth on the inside. And my experience with these pans is, is the quality of the cast of the, of the metal, you know, the cast iron that they made with these is very good. Unlike, like uh, the China made junk. Okay. If you hear that, uh, little Makita, she hears something in the backyard. So she's standing watch out here. Maybe we'll get her up here live in a minute. Uh, yeah, hopefully she don't go crazy. She's after something out there. All right. So anyway, but these are, are very good quality metal. All right. I very have very little problem with any kind of rust or anything like that. Unlike the ones made in China, the cheap junk that comes in here nowadays, which is about, I don't know, other than Lodge, Field Company, Stargazer, and a few of the other ones, pretty much everything but those brands, okay, are all made in China. And what they're doing is they're buying recycled cast iron and steel from America and making pans out of it. And it's got so many impurities because it comes with so many different kinds of things. So if Mrs. Backwoods is uh, it was watching the live here, I'll see if she can go out there and find out what the dog's after. All right, but these little pans made in Taiwan, my point, uh, very good pans, okay? Very good pans, and they're usually cheap, all right? So uh, also, Miss Backwoods got me this little uh, pan rack here for uh, Christmas. This come off of our Amazon store. So if... Uh, way um this come off of our amazon store so i wanted to remind everybody about our amazon store i uh, will uh try to give you a link in here to our amazon store if you're uh, wanting to buy anything from amazon you can uh you can go there we have a lot of great i mean really good cast iron stuff all made in america And uh, I'm putting that in for you right now. So stand by. But if you don't see what you want uh, on our Amazon store, then just use the search bar, buy anything on Amazon. I got people going over, buy toothpaste, dog food, vitamins, everything. And I bet I've sold, I don't know, three, 400 of them uh, Sportsman's Grills over there on that thing. And we appreciate everybody who's done that. You know, we get a little tiny commission. Doesn't cost you any more money. But uh, it does. Um, see why that didn't go. There we go. Maybe it popped up there. There you go. All right. That, right there. If you click on that link, you can actually save that link uh, as you go or go to that page and just save the page as a favorite. So when, anytime you go back on Amazon, you need something off Amazon, you just go over and click on that link. And uh, we appreciate it. Every little bit of support we get, it helps us to buy ingredients and keep up with cast iron, show you new products coming in and do uh, reviews and all that kind of stuff. John Daigle, uh, God, he says, uh, any Volrath skillets in your collection? I have never seen that. I picked up one used in a rough condition a few months ago, and he says he's digging it. Uh <laughs> I have not seen that. I have never even heard of that. So I'll have to do, I'll have to do some research on that. Um, so <laughs> Matthew McCarthy says, uh, my dog just got his dog all, all wired up. So yeah, I don't know if she's, she was hearing something back there. So anyway, uh, twisted ankle barbecue team. Appreciate you coming in. Uh, we, uh, competed in barbecue competitions, uh, back in 2014 great guys from right here in uh, central florida area appreciate you appreciate you out there we got uh, georgia trapper coming in give you a shout out he's got a question how how can i season a cast iron cauldron i have a very large one that i use to render lard from our pigs i would think just rendering the lard from pigs would 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 season it just fine just leave it coated with that lard and leave it on the fire after it's empty and let the thing get hot and smoke that oil into it should be able to do that two, three times and it, you know, take a season. But here's the thing that I've learned over the years. 
putting a lot of grease in a well-seasoned pan, sometimes we'll actually take some of the seasoning off of it if it's not burned in really well. Especially if you're using a, the oil, uh, oil with the same burning temperature. So that advice I just gave you about cooking the lard in may not work. I've never tried it, but you could try seasoning the cauldron with flaxseed oil or another type of oil that has a higher burning temperature than your lard does. So if it it has a higher burning burning temperature, it's going to make a harder seasoning on it than what you're cooking in it all the time. So maybe going up with one of the higher temperature oils to season it with, uh, maybe even the crispy or something like that. Um, uh, flaxseed oils are really high burn temperature on that. I've been having really good luck with flaxseed oil lately. Okay. So just, to, you're just going to have a trial and error, buddy. That's, that's it. All right. Uh, let's see. Darla, hey, she's throwing in some emojis there. Um, Mike Wilson says he's liking the lodge lineup. We're going to start talking a little bit more about some lodge here. In just a second. Uh, Leslie Miller's act, asking what oil do you use to season the skillet? And lately I've been using the flax. I got a, I got a little squirt bottle over right here. Uh, flaxseed oil. Been using that and I do it like a stove top seasoning on it. Uh, just about every time, either before or after I cook on my pans that need a little help. And there's still a few of them. Texas style barbecue scene. Appreciate you showing up. You can see if you look right back in the back chef, Johnny over here. I did receive the Texas plumb line um, that I won in your giveaway today. So we're going to be trying that out. And I just noticed it's got wild plums in it. And I love wild plums. We have them here in Florida. And every time I find a tree, it's got them on it and they're ready. I usually try to stop and pick me at least a few. All right. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, so he's on here uh, Steve Sproul, he's using flaxseed oil also. Uh, Mike Rogers commenting to Mike. He says, Lodge is good and cheap, but there is much better stuff out there. Yep. And uh, appreciate it, Chef Johnny, for everybody, for reminding everybody to hit the thumbs up button. But we're going to move on a little bit here. We've already been on here 23 minutes. I'm going to be on here an hour, and we got I got a big stack of pans we got to cover. Okay. So, talking about lodge, here is an antique three-notch lodge. And you can tell by these notches, the three notches right here in the smoke ring. Okay. This one could be brand name or could be generic. It's hard to say. But we know it's a lodge by these three notches because that was unique to the lodge manufacturing company for many, many years. And it's stamped uh, number six, which is eight-inch pan. And... Uh, if you look at the interior and exterior of this pan, okay, I mean, it's probably got a pretty good season on it. So you want to catch it in the light there. But the interior, exterior, perfectly smooth, okay? This is back when they sold them unseasoned, just bare cast iron. Uh, they didn't start leaving that rough sand mold finish in there until they started pre-seasoning pans because they found that the season stuck to it better right but if you find one of these guys here for uh you know less than 20 bucks in an antique store thrift shop wherever uh, even if it's got a little rust on it i would i would suggest go ahead and get it if it's under 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 20 bucks okay uh i think i got this one yard sale for five dollars but i have this one i got two of them i have this one i got and a 12 inches back there right there Two of them, ten dollars. Okay, this has been a great little pan right here. Okay, and that's your antique lodge. Okay, let's set this one up here. Now, your new pre-season lodge, and here's an example of it. This is one that's my uh, three-in-one combo, the combo skillet, and you see the difference. That's you know, catch the light there. This one's built up some season over time. And the seasoning will get slick on it eventually, but not as slick as the, the smooth old lodges will. So that's just an example of what you're going to get in the new lodge pans, even the new Blacklocks. If you haven't seen the, if you want to see the new Blacklock series, we've got a 
whole series playlist on our channel page. You just go to the back, just type in at top of YouTube search backwards gourmet. That should bring you straight to our channel. Well, it'll pull up a, a search and then click on our icon. My picture with this wall of cast iron in the background, take you to our channel page, hit playlist, and it'll bring up a whole playlist of our reviews on the brand new, um, black lock series, uh, premium series from from lodge so the next ones we're going to talk about are some antique stuff okay and some of these antiques are a lot of you guys favorite i'm sure okay um this one you see that i'm catching in the light just right this is a small box griswold okay uh, I, got, I bought this one in an antique store i think it was about fifty dollars and $50 is a great, great price for one of these old Griswolds. This is not the oldest Griswolds I have. The ones with the big logo, like that one right there. That's black. Like, I'm sorry. It's up above. You can't see it in the uh, picture. But it's uh, the, got the bigger. This has got the small logo. See how small that is? The ones that have the, one, the logo that's twice that size and the letters are slanted. Those are from like 1903 to 1909 and are very valuable. One I have up there is worth about $300 on the antique market. Okay. Worth more than that to me because it's a great pan. But again, as you see the interior of these old guys, that's perfectly slick. Okay. And it's taken us. This one has a really, really good season. I did work on this one quite a bit, building up that seasoning and, um, you know, getting it. This one had a lot of fried stuff in it, so it had that line around it where, like, uh, probably somebody fried a lot of chicken or something like that in it, and uh, it kind of, the like I said, oil can eat away some of the oil or your season. So, or they could, maybe they, they could, you know, something acidic in it could, and pull it out. But I noticed uh, even my three and one I use for frying chicken, sometimes if I fry chicken in it, I when I, after I clean it, I notice it takes some of the seasoning out where you had all that oil in there. But this is an awesome, awesome pan. If you find one of these for a decent price, like I said, around $50 is generally for, um, for number eight, uh, or 10 inch pan around $50 to $70 is about what they're worth. Uh, I've seen them people asking a whole lot more for them, but you can find them for 50, $70 all day long. Okay. Uh, usually antique stores. So this is a really good pan. These are made in America, Erie, Pennsylvania, all right? Back in the day, not anymore. All right. Uh, so, uh, hang on a sec. All right. Uh, oh, it's really hot here in Florida today. Like 86 daggum degrees here in the middle of a freaking January. Don't know what the deal is. So, I just want to say real quick, uh, reason I haven't been on live in the last year, week or three here is, um, you know, we had the holidays and all that stuff going on. Uh, it was really kind of hectic. And then uh, my dad, who's 80 years old, is having some health issues. So I, I just got back from the Jacksonville area today. He drove seven and a half hours today up there and back to go and visit with him. So stuff going on here, just kind of taking a little bit of priority instead of going live, trying to keep up the schedule for you guys for our normal weekly video. If you didn't notice um, that we actually switched our time for our upload to about 6 p.m. on Saturday. It was 11.45. We got Rodney Rogers in the door, outdoors in the in the uh, chat tonight. We appreciate you, Rodney. Uh, you know, I think uh, I've, I've sent you over my contact info. He's a, a local here. Uh, we still uh, need to get together and do a little collab or something. We can talk about it. Uh, Rodney has a, uh, he does a little, I guess, a Facebook live thing here. And uh, and he does, actually has uh, some really good uh, videos over on his channel. So if you want to click on Rodney Rogers there. He will uh, go to his channel and subscribe. He's got some uh, stuff over there, a bunch of gators, messing, killing gators, and doing some hunting and all kinds of stuff. All right, somehow I don't know why that did. I get. 
All right, let me see if I can get back to the bottom of the chat here. Um, my computer is like doing stupid stuff tonight. Because uh, I got notifications popping up over top of the chat. Yeah, I, notifications. Let's talk about that real quick. All right. I know a lot of you guys have turned on your notifications by ringing a little bell. But you still have your YouTube notifications turned off on your device, either your phone, your laptop, or whatever, your pad, iPad, tablet, whatever you're using. You got notification, YouTube notifications turned off in the YouTube app. I get the stats on those now. Uh, there's only about 6,500 of you that have, A, your notifications turned on, and your notifications enabled in the YouTube app. Uh, in the description below, there is a link to a video to show you how to do that if you don't know how. Okay. So if you don't have it in the YouTube app, your notifications enabled, you can ring that bell a hundred million times and you're still not going to get notified. Even if you do have both of those things done, YouTube still totally sucks at sending notifications. Jeff Johnny just uh, he just posted a great video on some making some wild javelina sausage. I didn't get notification for four days. Okay, so uh, it, it's I know it's crazy, but still, if you don't have your uh, notifications turned on in the YouTube app, you're never gonna get notified. Okay, they say you're unreachable. All right. Let's give a couple more shout outs here. Uh, we got Mike Wilson. He's in upstate New York. We got, uh, he went by so fast. Uh, Mike Wilson is a uh, U.S. snowbirds love to warm weather. We got uh, Robert Harris. I think we already gave him a, a timeout or a shout out. Tim and Dater uh, says he wishes it was 86 in Ohio. Well, I don't know. Don't don't wish too hard. I'm out here sweating my and especially in a chef coat. All right. Uh we got uh mod uh Ned NL. Good evening, greetings from the Netherlands. Appreciate you guys from over across the pond there. Uh it's two thirty one AM there in the Netherlands Netherlands. So uh yeah. I wanna hope you don't gotta get up and go to work tomorrow. Kevin Stoker, appreciate it. Uh, what Kevin Stokers asked the question, what's the best cast iron out there? Uh, first of all, let me give a shout out to Jay Rome F. He in Sevierville, Tennessee. Appreciate it. My uh, youngest son, Backwoods Jr., is up in uh, Sweetwater. So beautiful area of the country. We got uh, Sabadia All Good from Oklahoma showing up. Angie Pickner Corner, Comer from Ohio. Have an Indian head skillet from Wallpack. That's a pretty valuable skillet too. If you go back and watch one of my older videos, you'll see my Wallpack. Uh, I was fumbling around with it, reaching over the table over here on the wall, slipped, fell down behind the table, hit hit the concrete pavers, and broke the edge out of it. They're very very thin bands, uh, and split it all the way into the bottom of the pan. So now it, it's all it's worth is wall hanger. But it was a great pan. I was I was happy to find it when I found it. All right, let's talk about another another great skillet. Um, there's uh, Kill Kenny seventy four from Montreal. Appreciate you that from uh, up there north of the border. Got Jeremy Neal from Texas. Appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, all right. So before we start talking about what's the best pan and all that kind of stuff, I want to show you one more pan that if you can find one of these in great shape, it's probably one of the best pans that you could buy that's anti and that's going to be your wagner okay this is a wagner where you see i catch it light just right there wagner where from sydney ohio these pans were ultra ultra smooth right right from the factory this one still is uh, the only problem here that I have with this pan is, is they use these pans that were made to, to go on a, either a coal or wood burning stove. And you have those eyelets you could open up. And what would happen was, is these 
the bottoms would warp right where that hole was exposed to the fire. And that's the problem with this one. If you set this on glass top stove, it's got just enough, a little bit of bow in the bottom that you can just touch the handle and it'll spin around just like a top. Okay. And that's what you're going to find a lot with the Wagners and a lot of the Griswolds too, is because they are thinner that they did warp the bottoms back in the day. One issue on, you know, on a wood burning stove or anything like that, or it's still not an issue today. If you have a gas range, all right, it'll set on that burner fine. But if you have one of these glass top jobs or even an induction, a lot of it, these pans work awesome on induction cooktops. But for an induction cooktop to work, it has to have full contact with this metal so that the magnet can excite the, the, the molecules in the cast iron to produce the heat. But if it's spinning around and it's only contacting on a very small area right here in the center where it's bowed out, it doesn't work as well. All right. But if you got a gas range or like we use out here, the, the Concord double burner propane stove all the time, your camp stove, uh, even though the electric with the rings works fine. No problem. Just glass top like I got in the house. Not so great. Okay. So, but that, that's one of my favorite skills right here, especially out here. All right. Let's get back to the chat here real quick. Uh, at back with Gourmet, how do you start a rancid, how do you start a rancid skillet or Dutch oven over? I would either, I think I would spray it down with oven cleaner. Stick that thing into a trash bag, put it not the and not the fume free stuff. Get the uh, the full easy off the full the full bore all the fumes. Get you some rubber gloves on, just soak that joker with easy off. Stick it inside of a trash bag, tie that trash bag shut so it keeps them fumes inside of there. Let's set it in there for a couple of days, take it out, rinse it off water hose, and then start over with your seed. Okay. That will remove about 99% of the seasoning from most paint. Brush to it just a little bit, loosen up anything that's left. But if you leave it in there a couple of days, especially if it's in a warm, warm area. So if it's cold where you are, put it inside the house somewhere like in a garage. And uh, that'll work for you. It'll strip all that old uh, rancid season out of it. That way you can just start over and start over with something that I would start over with something that don't turn rancid, uh, like flaxseed oil. Okay. All right. Let me see. I missed some good stuff here real quick while I was yakking. Um, Matthew McCarthy says, I hope all of our military men and women fighting around the country get a chance to have some great, Cast iron Dutch oven cooking soon. Okay. Pretty good. All right. Um, so it's jumping by here pretty quick. Uh, let's see what we got here. Jump back to the bottom here. So while I'm doing that, uh, right now, you know, one of my favorite skillets in all of my arsenal since, especially for cooking in the house, because since I do have a glass top, we just talked about the glass top stove, um, is right now this field company pan right here. Okay. It's the fuel company number eight, which is a 10 inch pan. Uh, they are one of the sponsors of the show and I wouldn't, I, I don't sponsor anything or take on a, as a brand ambassador of any product on this show. I don't believe in a hundred percent. Okay. And, um, uh, even though lodge, we're a brand ambassador for them. I haven't endorsed all of the, everything they, they sell either. Believe me. If you don't believe that, go back and look at our series on the Lodge Cook It All. Okay? Just because we're brand ambassador don't mean if we find problems with it, we ain't going to point it out or tell you our opinion about it. Uh, I gave my opinion on the Lodge Cook It All. 
and, and yeah, go back and look at that series. But this this pan right here, perfectly smooth on the inside. Still got the you know still got that sand finish on the outside, but you don't cook on that part, right? But the inside of the pan is beautiful, and it has taken longer to build up seasoning on this Field Company pan than it has on some of my other pans. And I would have had a little problem with every once in a while somewhere on, you know, along the sides there, but maybe peeling off a little bit, but I just reseason, stick it back in the oven and uh, let it go again. And the bottom of this pan perfectly flat works beautiful on flat top or induction oven. He's a little pricey. Okay. But if compared to some of the, the, uh, you know, like this Wagner, you could pay a hundred dollars for this Wagner in an antique store. That's about the same price as Field Company. The thing with this Wagner is bottom might be warped. You might have glass top, might have induction, might not work for you as well as a brand new Field Company. Okay. So I, I recently did a review on the uh, on the number twelve also, which is uh, like a thirteen and a half inch pan. It's really really big. Now uh, Backwoods Gourmet Junior has that one as of Christmas time. So he's uh he's enjoying that one up there. I don't have enough people to cook for to have that need that big of a pan all the time now, but we did a review on it. It was awesome also. All right, Chipper's Family Adventures saying hi. We appreciate it. Good evening. Good evening to you. All right. Uh so David Reynolds is just coming there. He says that um the Stargazer is smoother than the field and costs half as much. I cannot confirm nor deny that because I have not tried Stargazer yet or even priced it. Uh, last ones I looked at were comparable in price with the uh, field, but I will do some more research on that. And maybe we'll uh, shoot them an email over there and see if they want to send one over here so that we can compare it to the field company pan. All right. Um... Chad Robinson, 45, says loves, ca loves cast iron. Last count was 300 plus, not a hoarder, exclamation part. Points, uh, board in Indiana. Yeah, I just had to stop, dude. Uh, I don't know how many we got now. I think we were up to like 40-something there for a while. I think I've given some away because, you know, we're always getting them from lodge and from field and um, new stuff to try out. Uh, I've just had to start gifting them, <laughs> just gifting them out. It's all, I only got so much room on the wall here. I'm already taking some of the wall over there. I got a stack in the house on this. Uh, oh, I was going to show you real quick. So, yeah, Mrs. Backwoods got me this uh, nice rack for my skillets. So this will hold five skillets, five different skillets. You can put those right up on there, and it kind of balances itself. And then you put the smaller ones up on the top. And uh, that really saves a lot of space in the house, and you don't have to have your, your skillets all stacked inside each other all the time where you're always trying to figure out which one you want to get. Yeah, but that's, that's worked out really great. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's working really awesome. Okay. Just like that. You can see how they, how they all just set in there. And they don't fall down. So I believe this is on my Amazon store and it's not expensive. All right. So you can check out that Amazon store. I dropped you the link there a little while ago. Or you can find that link in below any of our videos. And a lot of times in the first comment. All righty. Uh, let's get back to the comments here. David Reynolds. There's people talking to each other. Um, all right, I'm sweating out here, guys. Can't believe it's this hot in the middle of January. All right, Kevin Staggs, appreciate you coming in. He says, I'd like to buy some uh, classic cast iron, but I'm ignorant of reasonable pricing and sources. Where do you get yours? Um, Tell you, Cast Iron Chaos over on YouTube is a big time collector, and uh, I would try his channel. Um, I've learned a lot from him about what stuff's worth. 
but ultimately uh, what a product is worth is what you can get somebody to pay for it. Um, like I said, those big box Griswolds, you're not going to get anywhere. Every one you find of those is going to be somewhere between 250 and 300 bucks just because they were made early 1900s. Okay. Some of this gate mark stuff like this three, that spider right there. I've seen some of these for like $200. All right. The longer the legs are on them, the more expensive they are. And if the legs are octagon shaped like, or, uh, angular triangular or octagon even more than that because that dates them back to the early 1700s some of those old spiders actually came over from europe with the very first uh, settlers to america this one here we think was made by a blacksmith in america from a mold that came from england so who knows if that's true or not uh and there's not a whole lot of information left about them, but I do know that um, the spider skillets are, they predate wood stoves, so that's they're made for cooking on a hearth, so they're pretty old. I wish I had another one. I use that one camp all the time. Uh, Stephen Corson says, uh, "Are there health concerns using cast iron? Is there a chance iron can leach out into the food?" Uh, Iron is good for you. Your body needs iron. Actually, doctors recommend that people with iron deficiencies use cast iron in their cooking. Iron will not hurt you, bud. All right. Iron is a mineral your body needs every day. So absolutely not. As a matter of fact, just the opposite is true. Cast iron is going to be a way healthier option for cooking than using aluminum or pray to God, any of these nonstick surface coatings that gas off who knows what when they get hot. All right. So absolutely not. Like I said, cast iron is probably the healthiest choice in cookware because there's nothing in that thing that's ever going to hurt you. Um, John Daigle says, uh, there's another U S company, a uh, grizzly that's selling a nickel plated skillets. They're supposed to have a new inventory this month, according to their site. May check them out. I have never seen those nor used it. Um, Teresa, which 3063 says all my cast iron is from garage sale finds paid $5 or less. And I have some pans from the twenties and thirties. Tell you what, garage sales are a great resource for buying antique cast iron because a lot of people that are selling it, and even in estate sales too, unless they have a professional company come in, uh, you know, these professional companies, they, they know how to recognize the valuable cast iron and will and will price it accordingly. But a lot of times it's just private parties, uh, you know, survivors of someone who died that's selling it, and they have no clue. All they know is it's old, it's black, and it's greasy. And they'll, you know, they'll put $5 on a, on a, on a big box Griswold just to get it out of there. As a matter of fact, my Wagner, my wife bought for $12 estate. So she bought that one and a, the big one. You can't really see it's off camera up here. It's a big, uh, number 12 lodge newer one. And she got that one for $10. Okay, and that thing's about 50 bucks new. All right. All righty. Let's see what else. Uh, Mrs. Backwoods is reminding everyone to type the questions in caps. That just helps it uh, stand out over here in the um, in the chat. So if you guys got any more questions, we got about 10 minutes left here for I'm going to have to jump off. Um, and uh, go take care of some business. See how the video channel is doing. If you haven't watched our our video from last Saturday afternoon, that's um, how to clean and cook uh, Florida lobster and and mangrove snapper. Uh, we call it fresh Florida key food from the Florida Keys. Uh, go check that one out. It was a really really delicious dish there, and we used the the meat from the head of the Florida lobster to mix with the mango salsa, which is 
one of the best things I ever made. All right. I mean, it was really, really, really awesome. All right. Uh, J Rome F is asking, what do you think? What do I think about the Lodge uh, carbon steel pans? I got one. You can see the handle of it right there. Hang it up. Uh, it's behind the Dutch ovens. I, it, it also surprisingly comes from Lodge with a rough finish on it, which surprised me. I have a walk over here. It's perfectly smooth and it is seasoned up fine, but even their carbon steel pans have a, a rougher finish. They own them uh, and they come pre-season. They uh, so far the one I have works great. I did breakfast on it the other day just because it heats up faster when you're in a hurry. Um, especially if you're camping, you ain't got a whole lot of fire. Just, um, you know, toss it up on a fire. They work fine. I haven't, I did a review on it a while back. Go back, check out the channel page. I have a review on the large carbon steel, steel pan. All right. Uh, let's see. Travis Coggins says at Blackwoods. Um, I haven't. Well, oh, crap. It's going by so fast now. I, I put out the uh, the word there, and everything went by so fast I couldn't see it. Uh, also, want to remind you guys, super chats enabled. So if you want to help us out with a little contribution down there, just hit that little money button right at the bottom of the chat there and contribute uh, whatever you think is worth here. Um, somebody asked about nickel plated Griswolds. You missed a question. Okay, I'm being told I missed a question. I did talk about nickel plated Griswolds. I haven't ever tried a nickel plated Griswold. Okay. To be, to be uh, answering a question, I've never tried them. I have seen them at the store, and I've never bought one, so I've never used one. So. Okay, he says, he says, I guess this guy. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out where I was at here. All right. Somebody's asking, uh, Teresa, watch 53. If subscribers in the Orlando area, do you ever do a meetup and a subscriber for a beer? We are actually looking into that. Um, you know, I, I might put it out out there on a poll uh, on the on the channel page that everybody can see if there's a particular time if somebody want you know people want to meet up and do a, maybe a little cook uh, one of the local parks or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's a great idea, and I'm all in for it. Um, all right, uh, another quick one, Stephen Corson. Can you use the lid holder as a trivet to put the Lieutenant Dan Dutch oven up on coals? Absolutely. Uh, got that laying back there now, and I don't know if you guys noticed the sign back here that my ne that my um, nephew got me for Christmas back there, and uh, I thought it was pretty hilarious. Uh, it's showing up backwards on my screen, probably on yours too, but it says uh, it's all it's all fun and games until someone loses a wiener. All right. Uh, Texas style of barbecue and cuisine is uh, responding back to Jay Rome about the uh, the carbon steel pan, pans there. Um, Scott Bennett, appreciate you there. Appreciate the kind words. Uh, we've been around here on YouTube about ten years. Been been growing like crazy. We just passed 60,000 subscribers today. Uh, the channel really blew up here in the last uh, week, ever since we put up uh, our latest video a uh, week before, well, actually uh, last week, uh, best way to clean and cook a squirrel, uh, back from my old family recipe. And a lot of interest on that video and a lot and lots of trolls. So apparently uh, YouTube put it out there pretty 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 uh audience wide and uh yeah we got all the trolls showing up on there so i'm you know i have to go in there and i have to go in there and delete about a hundred inappropriate comments right now i'm sure uh it's been a daily thing you know if, if somebody doesn't agree with uh what you do they think that they have the the uh i don't know 
since they're you know can do everything they do on YouTube anonymously, anonymously, they think they can go in and just say whatever the hell they want to say about what you're doing. All right, uh, let's see. Let me get back to comments here. We got about five minutes left, guys. So if you got another question, remember to put it in uh, at Backwoods Gourmet Channel first, and then uh, type it in caps so I can see it. Uh. I don't understand what Ronald McDonald is doing in here. I suddenly pop a mole stops and da 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 da. I don't know. Uh, moderators, y'all keep a hot, uh, an eye on him. We do get trolls over here on a live chat too, and usually they do show up with. Uh, they do show up with these fictitious names like, you know, George Clooney and crap like that. McDonald, so far he hasn't said anything inappropriate yet, but uh, anyway, we get him over here all the time. Uh, <laughs> Raleigh Woods is <laughs> just coming here to remind you that Epstein didn't kill himself. All right, that's just, hmm. that's borderline right there, okay? All righty, I appreciate uh, the mods taking care of uh, taking care of the some of these people that are jumping in here so appreciate everybody for coming by and um jumping in giving your two cents worth remember you can if you missed uh parts of this video you can always go and watch it back over on our regular channel after it renders out and uh you know if you buy one of these new lodges and you don't like that rough finish you want it more to look like uh, this one does and more like those old ones do then uh, check out the video on our channel of how to smooth out a brand new lodge pan. Uh, it's not hard if you got some basic tools. All you really need, you don't even have to have as fancy of tools as we had. You could just use a random orbital, random orbital sander with some 80 grit and 120 grit sandpaper. Get it down nice and smooth. Oh, just about got away from me trying to balance it up there like that. But uh, Anyway, if you like, try that. And, and it does it does take longer. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's going to take longer to season this pan after you after you sand it out. Uh, it's going to take longer for it to build up. Um, but anyway, uh, appreciate everybody showing up. Hot here in Florida. Hopefully it gets cool weather here soon, man. This thing is just a, it is just a, uh, whew, feels like a May here right now, not middle of January. And Ronald McDonald says it says it that is really his uh, real name. So I don't know. <laughs> like I said, the last time we got we got bombarded with trolls. We had George Clooney. We had a uh, I don't know Ronald Reagan. We had a bunch of it was just carpet bombed us with uh, a bunch of inappropriate comments on live chat. So I thought maybe that one might start happening again. But we appreciate you there, Ronald uh, James Bentley. Uh, appreciate you coming in, Jim Stula. Thank you for coming in there. Um, obviously I like to thank all of my mods and all of my uh, members that are on here too. That's a uh, Texas style barbecue cuisine, Darla, a Mrs. Backwoods. I think we have John Daigle in here. Also another one of our, our, uh, members again, go, uh, you can go right down after this renters out. There's going to be a join button right there. If you want to see what that's all about, just click on join. It'll show you what the perks are for coming to member. Our lowest level members only a dollar 99 a month. Okay, dollar ninety nine a month is going to get you some special access to uh, our, a lot of our videos before they're actually posted. Um, going to get you uh, a lot of little blips and clips from me, uh, what we're doing in between videos, um, and also you always come up in any comment you leave is going to come up highlighted for me. In all of the comments that I deal with every day, which is hundreds of comments I have to deal with uh, every single day. And I, I do go through every one of them. Uh, old buddy uh, from the Marine Corps, Rich Harden, just showed up and he just said hi. Uh, just getting ready to jump off of here, Mr. Richard. But uh, <clears throat> if you want to learn uh, about what we talked about tonight, let's go back and watch this after it uh, renders out. Uh, the Frank Knight Rises, don't take it too seriously ronald's just a name okay 
All right. Um, all right, everybody. Appreciate you coming in nine o'clock. So I'm about to jump off of here. And uh, remember, if you are still on here and you haven't hit that like button there yet, if you please just uh, smash that before you jump off. We appreciate it. We still got uh, we got 70 likes and 78 people in the, in the chat here. So appreciate it if you hit that before we go. And uh, uh, Frank Knight Rises said he just saw my how to cook the best way to cook a squirrel uh, first video. Awesome. Uh, that is definitely uh, just a tip of the channel. If you go back to our channel page, there's uh, I think almost uh, 320 videos on our channel now. There's actually an entire playlist on how to cook uh, wild game outdoors. You can find a lot more about cooking other wild game animals on that playlist or just check out everything we have up there is it's a pretty wide we've been doing this 10 years so it's not like we just we just showed up yesterday all right appreciate it, everybody till next time remember to fish hunt eat and live Man, I think slow tonight.